a couple of days ago Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection release which is a remaster of Star Wars Battlefront 1 and Star Wars Battlefront 2. As you can see this game that should have been a really slam dunk easy win has mostly negative reviews. Only 20% of the users out of 4,900 said it was a positive. If we scroll down one of the issues is the game requires 50 gigabytes of space. This is nowhere near the size it was when it originally released. Look at the original Battlefront, the first one that released in 2004. We scroll down, this game only required three gigabytes of available space, so it's not that. Click on Battlefront 2, the original classic from 2005, and that one only was only 0.3 gigabytes. What has happened to this game? Now, I don't know the exact reason, I don't think anyone really knows yet, uh, but you can see that people have been talking about saying that it is like AI upscaled textures and they're just kind of not compressed, so they're like their raw uncompressed formats are taking up way more memory, stuff like at 4K resolution, that takes up a lot of memory, especially if it's uncompressed, uh, which could be the reason why it takes up just such an insane amount of memory, which I imagine it is something to do with the textures, sounds, or any videos that are just upscaled left as they are. So why it's such an easy win of a game really, you know, here's some remaster of your favourite two games at a pretty decent cost, £30, that's a great great bargain I would say, with some extra content to just then flop on the optimization. such a mistake, they're going to they're gonna use lose profits, lose players, all sorts, because people get looking at someone actually you know, this game, you can't play it, like free servers, 70 gigabytes, what the hell, what the hell's happened? Why are modern games, it seems like, remaining unoptimized, just absolutely gargantuan size and performance? The real answer, short answer, is obviously corporate greed. They want to release the game with these all these features, and then optimization is takes a sort of sideline. Users want features, really. Optimization optimization's nice, but for the user that's like kind of less, if you're taking away a time, they just want to release the game and if it's playable you know they make the sales and such so that's the ride but we're going to look at why they can actually really do that why can these companies get away with kind of releasing these unoptimized mess why are they so large why can they do that and i want to go back a couple of generations to the xbox 360 era and i want to just look at the hardware and as you can see here it only had 512 megabytes of memory and it originally released back in 2005 really kind of started kicking off in 2007 once those more bigger games start coming in so with this, you had way less active RAM memory to kind of store these very large textures and you had to be more conservative. The games had to be far more optimized so they could run, otherwise if you use all memory, uh, the system would die. And in fact, in stuff like Call of Duty World at War, if you went to very, very high rounds on Black Ops, Zombies, or World at War Zombies, the, it'd run out of memory such as the memory leak eventually. It took, took you like thousands of rounds. Once that happened, the game would just like take you back out because it ran out of memory. It had like a little emergency exception. And we can also check this Wikipedia article which goes over like home video console. And it has this like console generation overview and you can see how memory has grown. And once we get to the seventh, which is the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and the Wii, you can see it's about 588 to 512 megabytes. And I imagine the 88 is from the Wii, which was pretty much the same as the GameCube. But once we hit the 8th gen, we see a humongous jump, 2 to 12 gigabytes. And I believe it was the Wii U that had that, yes, that had that 2 gigabyte. But even then, the 2 gigabyte jump from 512 megabyte is a lot. That's like 200% increase. That is double, you know, that's over double what you did. And so for stuff like the Xbox One to go from 512 megabytes to go from a massive, eight gigabytes uh, with five gigabytes available to games but then it also went to 12 gigabytes with the xbox one x and then for the playstation 4 eight gigabytes at launch and now we are on to the night which is getting bigger not as big as that jump from the the seventh to eighth but still 10 to 16 gigabytes xbox series and the playstation 5 both have 16 i believe which is actually kind of more than most average computer uh, PCs had really at the time these launched. You know, most people had about eight gigabytes. That was completely fine. That was run all your games for it. It was the same as those consoles. But now we're seeing a double jump in that once again. So why is the RAM so important? Uh, well, 
you had to be far more optimized with the games you constructed back then, especially obviously with these ones. But I think the seventh is quite important because we're beginning to see photorealism take place and HD textures, also PBRs, physics-based rendering, so normal maps, bump maps, all this shininess to it, which take up memory, uh, the like multiple layered images. So the memory of storing these textures had to become more important. You couldn't just get away, oh, let's just do 4K. Uh, it had to be optimized. You couldn't just have a million billion models in. It really was a restricted game. And if we look at this Twitter of this Halo modder, this was back in Halo 3. All the rocks on this level, on the Covenant level, they were just the same rocks, all changed size and rotated. And this was a great way to keep the game saving resources. You don't, all that, that one rock just needs to be stored in memory. And all you have to do is call that rock and render it wherever. It saves you a ton of memory by just reusing assets. You see this less and less in modern games. It's because there's no need. You have so much memory. To go from 512 megabytes to like 8 gigabytes, you can now store multiple rocks. That's such a huge gargantuan jump to think of. It really did change the way you could make a game with its looks and textures because there was just so much free memory for you to use. You didn't really have to worry about whether the texture was uh, small and very optimized. You could be like, hey, we can have multiple textures for multiple different things, multiple models for multiple different objects. And this result was eventually just resulted in games getting very, very, very big. They fill in with all these new, new, new features and probably to an extent just leave content in the game because it doesn't affect, the, you know, it's not used or anything. Maybe it gets pulled in memory, but you know, there's so much memory available, does it doesn't really matter. This tech spot article goes over just from last year, 2023, you know, why are games getting so big? And they have these great graphs on here. And if we scroll down, we can see that over the last 15 years, so from 2007, they've calculated the the size of games each year. And it's actually huge. Um, you know, the average size of a game in 2012 was 11 gigabytes. And it's been a 6.3 gigabyte every year that's a huge year a uh, huge yearly increase uh you can see here some games are in the out what we call outliers they don't fit in the average range here are uh, the 150 gigabytes so that's like your call duty your final fantasy sevens you know every so often but they're coming far and far far more common as these games continue to grow it goes on to discuss another thing is not just ram but in terms of storage size the PS3 launched with a 60 gigabyte drive, which is pathetic compared to nowadays. We can actually check the historical cost of storage. This has been like documented for a very long time. And here I've just reduced it to 2007. Yeah, it goes back to 1956, but we'll go to 2007, kind of when the seventh generation was kicking off. And we see that memory, which is your RAM, has gone down quite a bit as well. Uh, flash, but an introduction of solid state drives going way far down but look at disk look at the hard drives 14.3 dollars for a terabyte compared to 2007 which was 200 dollars for a terabyte go to when 2013 hits off which or in this case 2013 2014 when the xbox one and ps4 kick off 35 dollars such a huge decrease in value for their hard drive they're they're cheap they're so cheap now memory is just so cheap the results in these games getting so big it's because people can afford them. It's like, hey, memory is so much so available nowadays. You know, the PS3, 60 gigabyte. If you release a game that was 60 gigabyte at the launch, you it wouldn't work. Like the operating system needs to be installed, and other features need to be installed. So that would be basically impossible. But now it's like, hey, people can just buy storage whenever at such a low cost, and they will really. You know, the terabyte. These games are 100 gigabytes, but a terabyte if is only 14 dollars, and you can fit couple of games on it obviously not great but that's like in their mind these publishers and developers are thinking it's like hey memory is just so cheap nowadays it doesn't really matter how big they are as long as they're really kind of just less than a terabyte i'd say other things it actually talked about is kind of like diversity is actually english like languages so the english files in the last of us alone is 1.6 gigabytes so you can see that adding on these different languages as gaming has just kind of grown as they diversify to multiple regions of the world and add localization. Do you remember with the Wii and Xenoblade Chronicles 1, that was actually never meant to release outside the Jap outside Japan. They didn't really think there was a market for that type of game, but people protested and eventually they did localize it for the English audiences. 
which was obviously eventually a huge financial success and resulted really in the trilogy as it became wild, widely popular on Nintendo systems. So that has been other reasons why these games have grown is that they have also just added localization you could choose different languages support multiple languages rather than just being kind of the default english or whatever native language it was made for the storage cost it does also state that eventually an ssd might be less than a hard drive which will be very interesting i imagine so yeah, ssds are obviously the future they're, they're non-moving parts they last longer and they're faster so this makes sense a thing that i would like to point out is this isn't actually entirely true that these games are big games back then were also big and if we look at the historical cost of the drive um uh, this article i found from storage new lesser uh 1997 the average capacity per hd from 12 was 1.2 gigabytes in 1996 and i want to say that this is important because if we go look at elder scroll sizes when we go to Daggerfall, it could go up to 149 megabytes. That is, again, that's a lot of memory. If you sort of convert that to one terabyte drive and this to gigabytes, you know, it's just like the size of Call of Duty back then. So that's a lot of memory. Uh, in fact, you can install like a smaller version. If you didn't have that memory, there was like an alternative to have like a 25 megabyte version. I'm not sure what the difference was. It's probably possibly smaller dungeons or something like that. And I was also curious about Doom. It's a you know very popular high tech game. What was the size of this with all four episodes? And they say uh, well 12.11 uh, eight megabytes. So very small. But again, if we go back to this history and this game release in 1994, sorry, the average drive was looking at 500 megabytes. Again, that's a lot of memory. These are kind of outliers. Uh, gaming was a lot more niche, and that's really the only two examples that I can really think of off the top of my head. That took up a lot of memory if you do in fact know of old games that took up a lot of memory that maybe you played and it's like oh god I, I can only have this one game in my system because that's all the storage i have and so do i think these games will actually increase in size so will we expect call of g to keep going on this huge gargantuan file size apparently according to steam it says 150 gigabytes uh available at launch i'm not sure what it is now but that's what it says and I thought I'd also look at Helldivers 2, just because that's a smaller budget game, so it's only £35, not a AAA game, just to kind of see a comparison. This game is also very large at 100 gigabytes, because again, a lot of those nice, glamorous, photorealistic textures that have been coming along. Will these games continue to get bigger? I'm not actually too sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they begin to plateau, and that they've sort of hit this kind of peak, like 150 gigabytes, maybe... That's all there is there is in the textures. It becomes unless these games take so long to go and make and that they're full of features in it, but even then Starfield, kind of a lower res game, was very large. I think that was about a hundred maybe. I can just double check now. 125, a big game. But you know, we've not really seen getting close to that 200 gigabyte at launch. Maybe I'm wrong, but just something else I wanted to point out is CPUs is that we went from obviously single core devices and if we scroll down to more modern architectures we then eventually went to the four cores as you can see here sometimes even dual cores and eventually go all the way down to the modern Zen we're onto our eight cores and even up to 32 and 64 gig core processors and that important because that means these CPUs are able to work in parallel to process these large textures without these multi-core systems we wouldn't also get these large textures so that's just something else to also note is that cpus have have increased in power allowing us to actually handle these higher bandwidths of memory required so in conclusion video games have gotten exponentially larger because memory has gotten exponentially cheaper and far more available Resulting them just being able to freely add features whenever without having to worry that you're going to run out of space. Optimization, trying to make them as small as possible, it's very much sidelined. Because it's so available, there's no issue anymore. Some games like obviously Call of Duty really do push that barrier and trying to make them look amazing while also being feature rich. While also trying to run in the system. But they're the very few exceptions I would say. Overall, you know, Battlefront 2, uh, those this collection, it's just like, oh, just AI, up, AI upscale them. 70 gigabytes, that's nothing nowadays. If Call of Duty can have 150 gigabytes, just sort of following those footsteps. And so, what's your opinion on this situation? Do you hate how large games get? Or are you completely okay with it? Some people still have very slow internet, and it can be frustrating to download a 150 gigabyte game 
want to play it. I used to have very slow internet and I couldn't just download any game whenever. I just had to let it download overnight. So unlike now where I can just say, hey, you know, what? I want to play this game. I can download it and maybe less than an hour later be on playing it. Back then, I had to wait overnight. It was so annoying. And so is that your experience as well? And are you frustrated with these games just coming out unoptimized like seriously 70 gigabytes rather than just doing handcrafted 1080p textures would have been absolutely fine or even just providing the option to download 4k textures alongside the game rather than forcing people to download it anyway later